Hello everyone, my name is Francisco Aeron de Carvalho Jr. I am a professor at the Federal University of Ceará in Brazil and I am here to present the work I am developing as a visiting scholar at the Curry College of Computer Science in the North Fisher University, entitled Platform Aware Programming in Julia, a proposal for improving the practices of parallel and heterogeneous computing in this language. In this slide, you can see my collaborators in this project. Alberson Dantas, Tiago Pessoa, Júlio Hoffman, Pedro Amaral and Clara Henrique. This is how we planned this talk. First, we will present our motivations to propose platform aware programming. Second, we will explain why we chose Julia to implement this proposal. Then, we will present the Platform Aware JL package, how to use it for doing Platform Aware programming, and we will provide some technical details about its implementation, using a motivating example, example presented before. We will also talk about some drawbacks and current limitations of Platform Aware GL, as well as some further implementation and research work to improve it and exploit the general idea behind Platform Aware programming. Finally, we will give our final considerations about this work. In the last years, the demand for high-performance computing resources have increased a lot motivated by applications in scalable data analytics and artificial intelligence. As a consequence, parallel computing and heterogeneous computing technologies, especially accelerators such as GPUs and FPGAs, have become even more popular in computational sciences and now also in enterprise applications. The interest in heterogeneous computing has been further increased as accelerators have become the key technology to push the frontier of exascale computing. At the same time, the use of computational resources deployed in clouds has also increased among high-performance computing users. With cloud-based HPC, users can solve challenge problems by creating powerful clusters of high-end processors, accelerators and interconnects on demand, relatively simply, using tools offered by cloud providers. They do not have to deal with the obsolescence of hardware, as happens when work with compromised clusters, especially when the financial resources to upgrade a physical infrastructure are scarce. Heterogeneous computing brought the challenge of heterogeneous programming to HPC developers. Never before have they had to work with so many parallel programming models, paradigms, and artifacts. In order to reach the peak performance of a cluster, in the general case, a developer should still use a combination of MPI for distributed memory architectures like clusters, OpenP for shared memory multiprocessors and multi-core processors, and APIs for programming accelerators, such as QDA, HOCAM, OpenCL, OpenACC, and OneAPI. Some of the accelerator program APIs address the problem of portability between accelerator architectures. However, code portability does not always imply performance portability. In fact, performance portability is the main challenge in the search for common interfaces for accelerator programming. This context puts pressure on designers and researchers of program artifacts, including programming languages, libraries, frameworks, and so on, who are concerned with how to handle several parallel programming models to meet heterogeneous requirements. To do this, they worked on providing support for existing APIs, as well as developing new common or generic programming abstractions. This is the case of Julia with a number of packages for supporting different APIs and abstractions for heterogeneous computing under Julia GPU, Julia CIMG, and Julia Parallel Organizations. However, the main question on the minds of programming language designers and researchers persists. 
Does heterogeneous computing imply heterogeneous programming to achieve all the potential performance of high-end parallel computing and heterogeneous computing platforms? One API is the most recent initiative in the industry, led by Intel, to solve the problem of performance portability across different accelerator types and architectures. We propose an alternative direction with platform aware programming, taking respect for the heterogeneous nature of programming for heterogeneous computing platforms as a premise for the design of programming artifacts. It looks for more modular or productive ways to handle architecture specific coding, thus make it possible to deal with different interfaces and abstractions for programming accelerators. In platform-aware programming, program parts may have different versions. These parts are called kernels because they are the computationally costly parts of the program. Each version of a kernel makes a different assumption about the features of the target as an execution platform. The concepts of assumption and feature are relevant in platform-aware programming. A feature is a characteristic of a parallel program computing architecture that may influence implementation decisions when coding a kernel. So, features characterize which kind of accelerators, processors, interconnection elements are present in the architecture of the target execution platform. In turn, an assumption is a loosely or partial description of a platform feature made by kernel to guide its implementation decisions. But what is the reason to choose Julia to implement platform-aware programming? Why not use a system-level programming language such as C++ or Rust, which are better suited to exploit architecture-specific programming features? This is a pragmatic decision. First, Julia was designed for the first time to serve HPC applications. The high performance of Julia programs has been demonstrated since its inception by the creators of the language. Most users choose Julia for this reason, so we think we can find people interested in evaluating and using platform-aware programming in the Julia community. Secondly, Julia gives us a combination of a dynamic multiple dispatch with a rich type system augmented with high meta programming expressiveness, which would make it possible to produce a first prototype in a short period of time, without language extensions or modifications to the compiler or runtime system. After three months of work, our expectations proved to be right. Thirdly, like other modern languages, Julia promotes a seamless separation of concerns between users and package developers. This is important because platform-aware programming cannot introduce additional complexity to Julia users. It should be transparent to package users and should be used by package developers with the sole purpose of specifying kernel assumptions, with an effort that cannot be greater than the effort required using user techniques to achieve the same goal. Our first motivating example in the use of platform-aware programming is the acceleration of image quilting DL, a Julia package for 3D image quilting simulation that is part of the Geostats JL framework for high-performance geostatistics. The image quilting JL package was developed by Julio Hoffman, one of the collaborators of this project. Image Quilting JL may exploit the performance of GPUs by means of an alternative impl accelerated implementation of Infilter, a convolution function from the Image Filtering JL package of Julie Mays organization, using OpenCL JL and CLFFT JL packages. In the last months, Julio worked with us in a the JL implementation of Infilter for the needs of image quilting, targeting NVIDIA devices. In the next slides, we will use image quilting JL to illustrate the platform aware programming constructors in Julia. Platform aware programming will be provided through a package named platform aware JL. 
it targets package developers who want to exploit parallel computing and heterogeneous computing resources, especially as accelerators, by offering a set of platform types to specify assumptions and features and a set of macros to specify kernels. In this slide, you can see an example of kernel declaration for the infilter function, targeting NVIDIA accelerators of Turing architecture. For that, the kernel specializes the type of two platform parameters, which are highlighted in the slide and closed in braces. Accelerator count specifies that at least one device must be present by means of the macro at least, which rewrites to a platform type, a quantifier platform type. Accelerator architecture, in turn, specifies that the device must be a GPU of Turing architecture by using the platform type Turing, a qualifier platform type. Platform parameters should be placed before the regular kernel parameters. A number of platform parameters are supported, giving kernels a rich set of assumptions. In this slide, you can see the names and the four types of the platform parameters used in the first version of Platform Aware JL, which are self-explanatory. The four types represent least constrained assumptions for the features represented by platform parameters. They are used when the programmer does not make an assumption about the feature represented by the parameter. Kernel methods are selected through multiple dispatch on a subset of platform parameters. This subset is selected by the plat package developer using the platform parameter macro, whose syntax is shown in this slide, for satisfying all package kernels. By default, all parameters are included. So, programmers must first clear the list of the parameters, the list of parameters, by using platform parameter clear, and then include each parameter by using platform parameter followed by the name of the parameter they want to use. Platform Aware JL requires platform types for making assumptions about features represented by numbers. They are called quantifier types. For example, they type platform parameters that represent resource count, such as accelerator count, used in our first example of a kernel method. Formally, there are two quantifier types, at least with a parameter n, representing numbers greater than the given number n, and at most with a parameter n, representing numbers less than the given number n. Unfortunately, Julia does not support this kind of type specification. So, we define a set of abstract types, at least n and at most n, where n is a label that represents 0 or a power of 2 non-negative number in a finite interval specified in the slide or infinite, a number greater than any other. We represent subtyping relations using nominal subtyping, exemplifying the slide. We type all quantifier platform parameters using tuple with two parameters, at least m and at most n representing an interval between M and N. Finally, as a synthetic sugar for package users, we define a set of macros to work with quantifier types, at least, at most, just between and unrestricted. Package developers have to declare a default kernel using the platform default macro. It will be selected if there is no platform aware kernel that makes a valid assumption about the features of the execution platform. In general, the default kernel is a fallback code that runs in a single CPU. The default kernel declaration using platform default is mandatory because it also creates the entry function, which is used to call the kernel function. The entry function is responsible for calling the kernel by passing to its platform parameters the actual platform arguments that represent the features of the target execution platform. In this slide, we outline a platform aware code for the infilter kernel example. It first declares which parameters will be used, 
which must be made before the declaration of the first kernel. Then it declares a default kernel, which will call the infilter function of the image filter in JL package, followed by a set of platform aware methods for different assumptions. The first kernel for accelerator supported by OpenCL. The second kernel for accelerator supported by CUDA. The use of CUDA is justified to exploit the performance of NVIDIA accelerators better. The third kernel illustrates a CPU-GPU parallel kernel required at least four NVIDIA devices, in that at least 32 cores. Also, it requires processors supporting a well-known SIMG extension. The fourth kernel illustrates an FPGA kernel that will run if at least one device of a given model of Xilinx is available. The fifth kernel, finally, illustrates a cluster implementation with a number of nodes between 8 and 16, memory size at least 16 GB per node, each node with at least two processors and at least 16 cores distributed among these processors. It also makes assumptions about the performance of the interconnection, probably because it implements a message pass algorithm with high communication requirements. This slide shows the entry function of infilter, generated by the platform default macro. The parameters of entry functions are only the regular kernel parameters, which are valid for the default method and all kernel methods. The actual platform arguments that are passed to the infilter kernel in the body of the entry function in red are taken from a dictionary identified by features. This slide shows the macro expansion for the last kernel method of infilter, that one targeted at the cluster computing platform with some specific features. The selected platform parameters are inserted before the regular kernel parameters. Platform parameters that do not make any assumption, shown in black, are typed with their default types, while platform parameters with assumptions, shown in blue, are typed with platforms used by the package developer in the kernel declaration, which are underlined in this slide. The reader may note that Julia's type function is used to type the platform parameters, receiving the platform type as a parameter with a subtype modifier. It denotes a type that includes all the subtypes of the platform type. Using this approach, it is possible to pass abstract types as parameters, without the need to create singleton concrete types. In a real implementation of the body of the kernel, one could find MPI-JL code, for example. In the kernel code, the programmer can know the actual platform argument passed to a platform parameter use its name. For example, if full quantifier types were supported, the program could know the number of available cluster nodes, processors, cores, accelerators, as well as the exact CUDA capability supported by the accelerator. We have some drawbacks and current limitations to report about our implementation of platform aware programming in Julia. First, there is the problem of lack of support for frequent fire types, only supporting powers of two values. This is an inconvenient expressiveness limitation in certain situations. For example, when we need to define features of platforms in actual platform arguments, we cannot represent arbitrary number of cluster nodes, processors, scores. Second, we did not evaluate the performance of code generated by the Julia compiler for platform aware kernels. This is important because the Julia compiler is highly sensitive to how you write the code and use types. So, what is the impact of having multiple platform parameters in kernels to compile optimizations? In the case of Julia, this is important to be measured in practices. In fact, we are still in a proof of concept stage of the project, building a prototype that implements the general idea behind platform aware programming. 
but we are very committed with the idea of providing a useful contribution to the Julia community, and we ask for their support to solve issues with Platform Aware JL. Third, we are still working on better solutions to the problem of determining the features of the execution platform for calculating the actual platform arguments in the features dictionary. Surprisingly, this is not a simple technical problem in the general case, since there are no standard ways to obtain hardware descriptions in computer platforms in general. We are still working with many alternatives but we decided not to discuss such kind of technical issues in this presentation. Please, don't forget to ask us how this issue was addressed in after this presentation, or visit the Platform Aware GL page on GitHub to see our implementation status. We now present some ideas of further works with Platform Aware programming in Julia. First, how to support architecture-specific platform parameters. For example, the compute capability of QD devices, the generation of Intel processors, and so on. Second, how to implement full quantifier types in Julia to address expressiveness limitations main when specifying actual platform arguments. Third, we would like to respond to this question. Could platform awareness influence the compilation process in order to optimize code generation for platform aware kernels. Finally, we would like to add the scenario where the platform features may change. For example, during a long running execution, especially when the program is running in a cloud computing infrastructure, and the user wants to reduce or increase the computation resources in order to minimize execution costs or accelerating execution. Now, we present our final considerations. Platform Aware Programming is a general idea we propose as programming language researchers for guide the design of programming languages, not only Julia. Julia made our prototype easier and it targets users interested in HPC applications. In addition, with Julia, we found an opportunity to contribute to a community of users around an increasingly popular programming language. We also remember that Platform Aware JL is complementary to other packages for heterogeneous computing in the Julia's ecosystem. We are not proposing any alternative to existing packages, since it does not propose any new model, paradigm, interface, or abstraction to program kernels. In fact, in the future, we could investigate tools to guide users to choose among the best program interfaces according to platform assumptions. Platform Aware G JL gives the ability to deal with specific architectural code in a modular way. You are free to use whatever package you want to program Platform Aware kernels. If there is a problem using some package, this is an issue and we need to investigate how to solve it. We are open to all potential contributors and users interested in Platform Aware JL. To conclude this presentation, I thank the official University, especially Professor Jan Vitek, for hosting my work in Boston, my current team of collaborators, and the Federal University of Ceará, especially my department, and the Master and Doctoral Program in Computer Science for the support for my stay in Boston this year. If you have any questions, or if you are interested in becoming a collaborator, please contact me by email or using the Platform Aware repository on GitHub. Thank you very much for watching this presentation.